Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to the moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I am joined by one of my wonderful co-hosts, Ricardo Martinez. Uh, but today we are very, very happy to be interviewing Michael Schmidt, the CTO of Amazie.io, uh, uh, who has also worked on creating a Bitcoin miner water heater, uh, which is pretty badass, uh, I must say. Uh, so yeah, Michael, uh, welcome on. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Hello, thank you for having me. Nice, guys. Hey, we're, we're super happy to have you here. And, and, and I guess the first question to kick off with is, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'd seen about uh, your Bitcoin miner water heater setup, uh, and I imagine that's probably most of what we're going to talk about today because it's pretty damn interesting, to say the least. Having said that, um, when I was checking out your profile a bit more, uh, obviously, like I saw about uh, the website and, and your role as CTO, like, what is it that you do? What is it that Amazie.io is, and what is it you guys do? Because uh, I'd be interested to find out. So we just provide web hosting for companies and we specialize a bit on like very high quality, high performance things. So um, I have a team all over the world um, in Europe, the US, Australia, New Zealand that basically ensures that the customers and the servers are happy. And um, yeah, that's what we do. Gotcha. Cool. Okay. So web hosting side of things. And so like, did you, when it comes to things like Bitcoin or I guess crypto, um, did you, is that how you got in, like found out about Bitcoin through like finding out ways you can accept fun funding for different projects you're doing online or how did you find out about it? I've most, I've heard it in like 2011, very early. I grew up in Switzerland and um, there's a quite an active um, tech scene in Switzerland and I mostly heard it from the cryptographic side because people told me that there is a new project that allows you to basically solve the double spending problem. So how can you, in a digital realm, um, send something that cannot easily be copied? Because we all know, like you can copy a JPEG, you can copy text. So that was fascinating to me. And so that's why I looked at, funny enough, actually at that point, you couldn't buy any Bitcoin. The only way, way to actually play with this, you had to mine first. So like you had to install um, the Bitcoin core that also was the miner. Um, and today it's separate. Um, but uh, yeah, that was the way. And we just, we literally sent each other 100, 100 Bitcoins just for fun and um, for trying. And um, yeah, that was, that was where when I got in contact with it. And like I said, I was mostly interested in the cryptographic part. And at that point, nobody talked about that this could potentially be a money. I mean, some people did, but um, it was just a cool tech. And um, and then I looked a bit into deeper and I realized at that point, because there was no SegWit, there was no Lightning. I mean, that's super, super early. We, I saw that like you could have a max of um, maybe like six transactions a second. And even that, if you looked at the Visa network, like they did 6,000 a second or even more. And I was like, okay, that's never going to be possible. It's a cool tech, but it's never going to be able to actually take over anything. And so that's where I dismissed it. And um, I also had no idea about the monetary system. At that point, I was really into tech. Um, and yeah, and only over time, I got in contact with it again. I heard about Lightning and things like that. And then really during COVID time, um, when the money printing couldn't stop, I thought like, okay, no, that's, that's not how I learned to balance like your financials, like a private. So how, how can the same thing work for a government? And then I started looking deeper and realized, okay, it's all broken. And, um, and then I, I got back into Bitcoin and learned more and basically got orange peeled by all the kind of different podcasts that you find out there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I guess like so. Yeah, it's, it's that standard. It's that very like uh, well-known story. Although it sounds like you got involved a lot earlier than others, but it's that well-known story of like, oh, I heard about it, or I found out, or I even got slightly involved, and then it's like something made me think, eh, you know, probably not gonna. And then boom, you know, like years later, you realize the uh, errors of your ways. Which it, hey, I think uh, pretty much ninety-nine point nine percent of people who found out about it earlier have been through that. So it's uh, it's no worries. Um, I guess like the, the the big question here to to start us off. Um, oh, and I should say actually, our roaming reporter Jerry has arrived into the podcast. Uh, he came in a few minutes late, but uh, you know, uh, happy to have you here, Jerry. Um, uh, but yeah, sorry. So yeah, the, the 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 main thing that I've heard about and 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 the reason I know who you are <laughs> is because of the Bitcoin uh, mining water heater setup. Um, take us away with where this idea came from 
I, I want to hear it all, basically. Okay. So all right. let me know. All right, buckle up. Um, yeah, so like I said, for me, mining, I really started installing miners on computers. And at that point already, like, um, you always thought about, okay, how could you get the fastest miner um, or the best computer to mine? And so, um, but then when I dismissed it, like I've heard later on about A6 or like GPU second, and then people talked about A6, things like that. And I, I always knew how the mining part works, but I really didn't really care too much. And then when I came back into Bitcoin, really understanding for what it really is, what it, what it not only could, but I really believe will become. Um, I looked deeper into the mining and saw all these ASICs that are super highly specialized. And I saw also the fans on them. And so I was like, okay, I'll get one. And literally I just like got one, got it at home, plugged it in and you would get like by 95 decibel. Like it, it sounds like a fighter chat that takes off. And so I was like, oh, okay, I guess like, let's figure out how to make this a bit less loud. And so I played a bit with, um, with putting on different fans and like uh, learning about all of this. And so at one point I actually had a system that I could reasonably work right next to it. So I basically replaced it with like a really big squirrel fan, which is just much bigger. Um, but because it's bigger, um, it, it is less loud. And so I just had this miner running in my garage and I just wanted to play a bit with mining and figuring out how all of this works. And I got my first sets and I learned about the pools and I learned about miner software. So I played around with like brains that you can like individually change the ASIC um, speeds and things like that. But really just like learning what I'm all about this is. And then um, end of last year, uh, my wife and I, we planned to do a trip for uh, six weeks in Colorado and uh, with our Airstream. So we own an Airstream trailer that we um, pull around. We used to live in it full time, which was really cool. Um, but since COVID we're more stationary, but we still go on these longer trips. And one of the challenges we always have is to actually heat the Airstream because it's just tiny insulated. And, uh, and the way you heat it normally is with propane. But if it's really cold and I'm in Colorado, it gets like minus 20 degrees Celsius, and um, so it gets really, really cold. You basically burn through a propane tank almost a day, or maybe you get to the second day. So it's caught, you're constantly thinking about where do I find this propane? Because if we go out in the middle of the night, it's going to be like zero degrees in the morning. And um, so we, that was always like something. And so you're always checking like, okay, where can you buy this propane? And while I we prepped for leaving. I was like, couldn't I just take the miner that heats my garage or my, my office? Couldn't I take that with us? And so I planned a bit and I basically said, oh, and I figured out that if I put it inside the box, that is like a bit of rainproof. It's not waterproof, but just the rain doesn't go into the box. And I basically take a vent like of a, of an, of a clothes dryer and pipe this into the airstream that it would heat up the air from the outside and pipe it into the airstream and heat up the airstream inside. And I was like, oh, okay, let's try it. Let's figure out, find a way how to pipe this into, um, the, into the existing uh, fan system of the airstream. And yeah, just literally, I, I think I finished like a day before we left. <laughs> so I never slept in it. I never really tried it, but yeah, we just went on. And during the six weeks, it actually worked. Um, so we were able, to heat the, the airstream and um, we're not completely though because one S9 unfortunately is not um, strong enough and I only had one single one at that point and so yeah but we were able to reduce like the propane usage by like half um, because basically during the day the miner was perfectly fine just during the night sometimes the propane then still kicked in uh, when it wasn't wasn't warm enough so I built the whole system. I built like a control system that still measured how, how hot it is. And if it was still too cold, then the, um, the, the regular propane heater still turned on. So that was really the first time that I started to look into how could I actually use this heat for more. And I put this on, on Twitter. And by the way, I have a picture of it. Let me shortly share this. So yeah, please do. Please do. We can look at this. Do, do so that's any, basically the whole system. Background? Do you have any background in like heating and stuff? Because no. if I try to do this, I blow up the airstream. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no. So Michael, yeah. So yes. I had I had a quick question. Like, how how are you uh, powering the miner? Like, 
I, I've heard that like you need like an inverter, like if you're powering like appliances and stuff in a trailer like that. Yeah, so we mostly stay at some place where you actually have access to the normal power. Um, so this was like at an, uh, an RV park uh, where you have power. Some RV parks, they only have 110 volts. Luckily, the S9, you can run it also on 110. It's not going to be as efficient or as hot then. But um, um, in some cases, I actually found 220 volts. So um, that, was, um, that was good. And funny enough um, that you pay the, the RV parks, you just pay per day. And it doesn't matter how much energy you use. Um, so we basically heated the airstream for free. And I also got some sats back. Um, one of the one of the parks, I actually asked them if they want some of the Bitcoin back, but they, did, they didn't care at all. So um, we'll see. Um, but yeah, so that was basically the system. Um, so this was just, there is the S9 sits in there inside the box. There's the bigger fan, the squirrel fan. And um, yeah, this just, just piped the air into the airstream. And that was really the first time that I personally realized, hey, this could actually work. And I put it on Twitter and it exploded a little bit i would say like and people reached out and they were interested in it and people said like oh could you use this for something else and things like that and that's where really where the journey started off um thinking about how could i use the miner for more than just mining bitcoin and and the body became summer and i was like okay really heating a house is not gonna be necessary i live in the east coast in the u.s so like during the summer you you're cooling your houses and so, like, I, of course, immediately thought, oh, I'm just going to build the same for the house. But again, I don't need it. And so um, I looked a bit more and I saw other people online also talking about mining and heating waters. And so I started to research a bit more and I realized that these water heaters, A, are basically just a really big water kettle <laughs> that just heats up the, the, the water. If you use an electrical one, it's literally just a resistive heat. So um, it's not like any fancy heat pump system or at all that could be more efficient. Um, plus, it also uses a lot of energy. So in a normal household, the water heater is actually probably like 50% of your electrical bill is the, is the water heating piece. And so that was like the next thing. I was like, okay, how could I do this? And I knew I have heat from the miner and I want hit hot water. So I was like, okay, how could we combine this? But very fast it became clear to me that I can't put the miner into the water. Then I learned that much about physics that that doesn't play together. Um, and um, so I looked a bit deeper and I found a couple of people of talking about immersion cooling. And, um, and that was just before Bitcoin Miami 2020. So I went there and I saw all these huge industrial immersion systems like that have whole tanks that you can put like a 50 miners in it with huge fans and everything. And I was like, that doesn't sound too hard. Like, um, that, that should be a way to recreate this. And yeah, basically came home from Miami and started to play with it and um, figuring out, um, A, what type of liquid do you need? What type of plumbing? What should you think about? And I researched more into water heaters and I found a whole community of people that use uh, firewood stoves to heat their water. So it's, let's say you, you live in the woods and you have a lot of wood available. Um, a lot of people, they heat their house with their wood stoves, but also they use it also to heat the water. And so, and so there are all these people that um, build like heat exchangers and we can go in and how exactly it works later, but it's basically similar to using waste heat to heat the water. And I watched tons of YouTube videos about that. And yeah, went to Home Depot, got all the parts and just started building and learned a lot and showered myself in 140 degree water once because I forgot about water pressure and things like that. But no, it was really, it was a lot of fun. And yeah, today, um, I'm, as of today, we're basically heating the water heater since a couple of weeks. It's now purely heated by the miner. We've interviewed um, some mining companies like uh, Marathon and uh, they talk about how there's like going to be a merger of like utility companies um, beginning yeah. to mine. And then there's also like the, the stereotypical like Bitcoiner claim that every home will have an ASIC. 
Yes. Um, with your water heater, it kind of seems like that actually could become a viable future. What do you think about that? Totally. I mean, that's definitely after I've built it and I realized that this is actually viable. And um, I fully believe that in the future, we're going to have a miner at home or two um, to do this. And I think that's the most important thing that people need to understand. So let's say you have a water heater and the water heater usually is three to 4,000 watts of heating energy. Now, um, let's say you use um, 100 kilowatt hours per month to heat your water. It doesn't matter really, but um, let's, let's use 100 for a simple calculation. Now, this 1,000, uh, this 100 kilowatt hours can heat the water a specific amount. Now, if you replace this by a miner, it will, the miner will use also 100 kilowatt hours to heat the water the exact same amount. Because a miner, like any other computer, converts the energy 100% into heat. And that was one thing that I wasn't really aware of. So we always think like, oh, the computer is calculating something and that uses energy. And that's not true at all. The calculation generates heat and that's where all the energy goes. So if you have a computer, let's say that uses a thousand watts because it's a gaming computer, you basically have a thousand watt space heater in your room that heats the room all the time. And so because um, the heat is 100% converted into electricity and the water heater does exactly the same, the electrical coil in it, the electrical bill at the end of the month, if you have compare an electrical heater compared to a minor heater, it's going to be exactly the same. So I don't pay more electrical bill than if I would just have the water heater by itself. And that suddenly changes the calculation for so many people that say, oh, I, I've talked to people that are, they pay like 20 cents or 30 cents up to for the electricity. And for these people, it doesn't make sense to, to mine because Bitcoin, the price of the, the value of the Bitcoin you get back, at least if you compare it at the time when you mine it, you're going to lose money. But in my system, or if you use the heat for something else, you would spend this electricity anyway. The electricity could, could cost $100 per kilowatt hours. And because you would need this anyway, because you want to shower and you need hot water, um, the Bitcoin that you mine is basically free because the electricity you would have paid anywhere already. And that's, I think, what so many people are realizing now, that this changes the calculation completely. Now, of course, this means you can only mine when it's actually needed. And I think we can look later a bit into like um, how often it actually runs and stuff. So my miner doesn't run 24 hours a day, um, not at all. It only runs when it's needed. But if you run it only when it's needed, it's literally using the exact same amount of energy. And so my hope is actually that in the future, you will go and buy a water heater and it has a miner inside because it uses the exact same amount of energy. It creates the exact same amount of heat. So why would you not buy a miner based water heater? Um, and so I'm actually calling a normal water heater. That's just a very dumb miner. Or that's a miner that lost its pool or for, I don't know, like um, is, is unable to mine or mines the wrong coin. Um, so that's really like, yeah, no, I, for me right now, I do not see a reason why we would not, in the future, create all the heat we need in our houses with a miner. Take my money, just take it now. No, like when, <laughs> when are you? Uh, when, when are you going to start doing this, man? Like when are you going to turn uh, this into a commercial enterprise? That's what I want to know. I mean, I, the amount of people in my DMs like offering me actual money when I can fly out to install this, it's it's crazy. Um, to be very honest, like it was not the plan to build anything commercial. I'm just like a natural tinkerer myself. If I have an idea, I have to figure it out and build it. And um, now having built it, I definitely look at something and say like, okay, this could actually work. Um, there is actually a company in France that is building a product like that. Um, they're called Wise Mining. So they, they sell you a water heater. It has a Bitcoin miner right next to it and they do exactly what I've built. They are only selling to friends right now. So um, we'll see if we can maybe convince them. And, um, or I could totally see that, yes, maybe somebody starts something in the US. Right now, it's my plan is to open source as much as I can about the system. 
um, with findings, with knowledge. That's why I'm here to share about this and also tell people how it works. That somebody that isn't afraid or that knows a little bit about plumbing, that's mostly, it's mostly plumbing stuff, um, and maybe a little bit about mining, a little bit about electricity, that somebody could rebuild us themselves. And who knows, maybe we create an, a fleet of people that know how to install this and we're going to install it in all our neighborhoods. Like that's probably what I'm going to do. All my neighbors now suddenly are super interested in Bitcoin. <laughs> Go figure. Um, and so that could maybe be a system that we install something like that um, on the site. But I really want to say like right now, it's really a proof of concept. Um, it's not like a system that has been battle tested for years and years and years. But I know there are companies out there, which makes me very hopeful that maybe in a couple of years, maybe even in months, you can go and actually order something and a person installs it at your home. Uh, in terms of uh, cost, how much does it cost to build your, to build the mine, uh, your hidden miner compared to a regular, you know, heater? Yeah, so I'm actually still using the water, normal water heater. I still use to store the hot water. It's just that the heating coil or the gas burner is disabled. Um, and so right now you're looking at around costs of like a thousand US dollars, which is the miner. So an S9, I'm using a single S9 right now that, that is sufficient to just heat um, a 20, uh, I think it's a 40 gallon. So like 120 liter water tank. Um, that is the cost of the miners around three to four hundred dollars, um, and then you need to uh, we need to you need to get the liquid um, because it's a specific oil that is specialized for uh, miner immersion cooling. That's and again depends on how how much you need, two to three hundred dollars, and then all kind of parts and things like that. So if you think around a thousand dollars, that's a good um, number. You can go quite far with that. But of course, okay. my hope is also that this comes down over time, that um, I'm working on auto and I'm making it simpler. And maybe like if a company actually would be interested in doing that, um, yeah, maybe we, we could reduce the costs um, a bit more. So, uh, so a follow-up question would be, uh, you mentioned uh, using S9s to attaching it to the heater. W would it only work with S9s or other, you know, big combining gear uh, equipment? It does work with literally anything. Um, you could even put your hairdryer in it and it would heat the water. Like it doesn't, anything that generates heat um, works. What I, I'm using S9s right now specifically because of the brain software. Uh, so the brains firmware, which is an aftermarket firmware that you can install on some miners, not all of them, allows you to get a bit more data from the miner. So I know exactly the temperature. And um, also, and it allows you also to control it a bit more. Now, I don't think this is going to be necessary in the future, but right now it's literally a proof of concept. And I'm looking at like graphs every single day to see like where the water is, how hot the miner was to just learn more about the system that we then could use this also for other miners as well. But from a physical point of view, anything that generates heat will be able to heat your water. What about if you're like in a tropical place and like heat is something that you're trying to get rid of? Is there like a way to convert that into like air conditioning? Good question. Yes, there is. Physically, that's possible. Um, in my Airstream, actually, there's a fridge and it runs on propane. So there, it's called absorption chilling. And it, it basically is able to convert heat into cool uh, either hot air or hot water. And um, also if you go to a much bigger scale, like I used to work like in data centers and some of them actually have absorption chillers outside. So what they do, they take the hot heat that comes out of the data center, they run through absorption chillers, but they're like size of like shipping containers. And on the other side comes out cool water and they use the cool water again to feed it back into the, into the climate control system of the data center. So there is ways I haven't found anything that really would be like on an on a residential scale. Um, I don't think everybody having like a shipping container in their backyard wouldn't be a real thing. Um, but I do think that this should be able to be to be done because it's done in RVs. Like it it, it exists. I just think the problem is in the past we no, never really had waste heat in residential areas. Like that's not a thing that usually a house generates waste heat. With the miners now, suddenly we have a lot of waste heat. 
And so I do think that there's actually going to be a whole industry coming up for these um, waste heat reusing systems, either in cool or, I mean, maybe there's some other things you could do with it um, that you can install in your house. So it's, it's definitely something I'm going to look into um, and I'm going to figure out how we could do that because that would be, of course, the dream that in the future, you just have a miner or two or three at your house. It generates hot air or hot water and you can run, your fridge uses it, your, your hot water heater uses it. You have a pool or you plumb it in there as well. And if you need to cool, you can also do that. Um, so I, I do think it should be possible in some way or another. When it comes to utilizing waste heat, man, the people we need to speak to here are the people who have legally grown weed for the last, like, you know, a couple of decades. <laughs> they're going to know, man. They're, they're going to have I've ideas. Seen, I've seen greenhouses that are run by miners. So I've seen some pictures. So, yeah. They they must know, right? Like, because I, I know there's obviously that thing about the lighting and stuff that you generating too much heat and stuff. So they got to know a good way to, to, to utilize that, I'm sure. But I, I think, like, a, something I'm interested in as well is obviously... Before the wall heater, you spoke about the first thing, which was the RV, right? Um, yeah. And for those who don't know, it was like a, it's one of those um, classic like metal, uh, like pill bullet train looking kind of things. There's classic American ones for anyone who is listening. Um, and what you had was a box outside uh, venting through and it had the, it, so it's like kind of going, going inside of that and so the air vent is going in. So I guess the questions there are, when it comes to, you need some kind of internet connection, not much of an internet connection when it comes to mining, as far as I'm aware. Um, probably could run it on dial-up, I think. But, um, I'm not an expert. Yep. Um, but so did you have like a hotspot going or how did you have the internet situation sorted out for that? Because I assume you're running it 24-7 most of the time by the sounds of it uh, is the yes. first question. And then uh, second question, oh, I can't even remember the second question. We'll just go with the first question. I had two All questions, right. but I can't remember. So it really depends where you are. Um, some um, RV parks have um, have Wi-Fi, so you just connect to them. Um, I then have like a little router that connects to the Wi-Fi because the miner itself doesn't have Wi-Fi, so that just converts Ethernet to Wi-Fi. Um, but as I'm like, while we were living in the airstreams, um, we actually always had like um, little uh, cellular routers um, to to connect to it. Uh, what I haven't looked at is like. Um, is actually like satellite. So like Blockstream has this whole satellite system that you could actually, um, you can only download, but you can like download the block um, or the blockchain from Bitcoin through satellite. So you would need less, you only need, um, uh, you need to send or you need to communicate with the pool um, through upstream. But of course, I mean, uh, Starlink, will probably be the, the last solution we're going to have. It's just like to have a Starlink satellite and then, or a dish, and then you can literally mine wherever you want. So like you say, it's it's not a lot of bandwidth you need. So even super small, super um, weak internet is enough. I actually follow this guy that's like a Linux YouTuber and he um, broadcasts from a Starlink that he has on an RV. Yeah, it, I mean, you have a 200 megabits with Starlink, so... That the problem is solved, and it's globally. So even if you are somewhere where nobody can find you, you're gonna be able to mine there. Yeah, I can see in the in the future, like I, mean, I know now it's possible, but I can see like five years time, maybe slightly longer, where it becomes really normal to like just be like, hey, I just pay. Because what I'm imagining in the future is that you're just gonna pay some fee of sum of money, and that will get you your internet everywhere no matter where you are at any time whether it's at home whatever uh, i imagine that's where we're going whether it's 5g or starting whatever it's going to be um so i guess and, I, and to me i feel like the kinds of people who spend a lot of time in rvs are usually bucking the trend somehow in life like they you know, if, you're, <laughs> if you're living if you're living in a truck or an rv or something you, you're probably willing to not go the normal route right like so i feel like those kinds of people are usually more open to the idea of okay well shit, instead of using propane or whatever, I can heat my truck and mine Bitcoin. Even if I don't know what Bitcoin is much, I know that it's some kind of money. So it's like, if I'm going to pay, you know, similar cost to heat my truck or it's, you know, or even easier because you have to go find propane all the damn time. Um, if it, this is, I think this is the key to hit on is like, if it, when it comes to Bitcoin and people, like if you can make it easier for them to utilize yeah. like Bitcoin solution or they can do the same cost or cheaper and make some money back, yeah. then they're probably going to be pretty incentivized to go ahead totally 
Um, so that self screams is like a really cool idea as well as like someone commercializing that or, or even just having like, um, like a how to guide around like, okay, you buy two miners, you shove it in this box, you want to waterproof it this way. And then I, I guess it's like, we could, we could have ideas around that and how people can, can set that up, I guess. Um, even to the point of, okay, and you can buy this cellular, um, what are they called, whatever they're called. Uh, and then that can like pull in internet and you can pay this fee amount or whatever. So yeah. I think there's quite a lot of interesting stuff to be had around that. Um, especially because someone who can, who can pay for a monthly fee for internet anywhere can then use it also for their internet use anyway. So they're not wasting money yep. on it. And yep. there's all sorts of recycling possibilities there. Um, so yeah, I think it's quite interesting. Um, Michael, you mentioned you're using S9s, but like, do you get like more efficiency if you use like an S19 or something? You would, yes. So an S19 right now is profitable. Um, while an S9, if you if you run it just for the mining, like you would lose like two to three dollars a day right now with the Bitcoin price. Uh, the thing is, just like an S19 costs you like eight thousand dollars minimum to buy, while an S9, I mean, if you're lucky, you maybe find one for two hundred dollars uh, on like Facebook Marketplace. So, um, and. So that was the biggest reason that I have an S9 is like, I'm really interested in how can we use something that otherwise wouldn't be usable? Because if you have an S19, if you pay $8,000 and it's profitable, you want to run this 24 seven. My system just only runs a couple of hours per day. And so it's really not there to be as most efficient. So if you have an S19, you're going to want to run this all the time. And so that's why I, well, A, I had an S9 just lying around, and B, um, I think it's actually much better to use these because, I mean, at least right now, so um, like if anybody is interested um, in doing this, buy the S9s right now because you literally find them like for super, super cheap, um, saying like $100, $300 a piece. Um, if the price is going to go up of Bitcoin, yeah, they're going to be much more worth uh, very fast. And so... Um, it's just simpler and cheaper to use an S9, but you can use anything you want. It will be possible, yeah. Assuming that you wanted to build, like uh, like you said, you, you wanted to commercialize the product and um, for people to use, uh, would you, you know, specialize only for S9s or would you give people the options of having to use, you know, S19s and, you know, other mining, other machines? I could imagine that we have different like levels. So basically, if you're just if you if you want to mine at home and you only want to run a water heater, we I will probably suggest you an S9 or maybe two of them. Um, but if you have more usage for hot water, which could, let's say you have a pool outside and um, that you want to heat as well, or you have a really big house, or we go like into in the start industrial, like I, I I'm not a pro in this at all, but I can imagine like a hospital. They're going to have huge freaking water heaters there that run um, water, hot water. So, or you're a commercial swimming pool or um, a hotel. And so then if you then can run something again for 24 hours, you would totally put an S19 in there again. Like that's, that then makes more sense. So it's really about how long will the miner run every single day and um, how much you're going to pay for the miner and at which point you're going to have a break even off the whole system. Um, but for home mining right now, I'm right now I'm using one S9 and I think um, I could, I'm going to play with two or three of them just to see how it behaves uh, and uh, changes a bit. And I think there's a, so obviously beyond it being cool and beyond it being just awesome to, you know, make some money whilst heating your house or your RV or whatever, in my eyes, like from the uh, idealist standpoint, there's been a lot of like different uh, battles uh, with Bitcoin, like block size wars, all these different things. And um, especially when speaking to, was it Compass or uh, we've spoken to many mining companies, but whichever one it was um, that was saying about uh, energy companies being able to mine and, 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 and obviously the different various like big mining groups and companies that, that do it. Um, and there was the censorship um, situation where like blocks were getting censored. And yes. I can kind of, and, and then you've also got things like, okay, so the FATF has this like new travel rule, which they're bringing in for you. And I can see this it, it, sort of turning into, well, you know, like if, if your Bitcoin wasn't, you know, um, abiding by this or that, then it's not really acceptable Bitcoin for any exchange or any business legally in this country, in that country. I can see all this kind of crap starting to appear. Yep. Um, and it's probably only going to get worse realistically. So 
I think it's the, the dream here is it's almost like we're again starting another situation where it's like the little people get to fight against yeah. the big companies. Cause it's like, Hey, if, if, if you've got an opportunity to buy for your RV or for your water heater, for your house or whatever it is, or if you're going to try and make it into an air conditioning unit um, and people just a simple, you know, mum or dad down the road can just go, okay. And buy it and someone can install it. And then it's, you know, going to, going to actually make them or save them money. They'll probably be doing it. And also they'll be helping in a situation potentially where, we can kind of battle back really and say, well, actually, no, like this is our Bitcoin. Like it's yeah. the people's Bitcoin, yes. not yours. This seven companies that are all following X, Y, Z legislations and hiding miners underneath of uh, floorboards in New York and things like that. So I think it really kind of, I, I'm super interested, especially because of that very reason. Like there's a lot of crap going on and I can really see things going worse and worse right now. So um, yeah, I just think it's awesome, dude, like, from, from that perspective. Like, is that, is that, it must be something that's come to mind for you. Like, is that something that's worried you a, a little bit? I mean, it, this was not the reason, but the more I looked into mining, yeah, I mean, I realized that in the end, it's only the miner that decides which of the blocks are added to the transaction. Right now, there's a game theory that it makes of course sense for the miner to decide, okay, I'm going to add the blocks, I'm going to add the transactions with the highest fees because this gives me money. But as a miner, I could decide to basically sanction one specific UTXO or an address. Um, and if I don't like this one, I'm not going to add it to my block. And if there's enough miners that do this together, um, yeah, they could make it really hard for anybody to transact Bitcoin. Now, of course, right now, we hope that this never is going to happen. But let's imagine NATO actually figures out how the mining stuff works. And they say, OK, we're like all the NATO um, members, all their, their companies that mine that are stock listed, they need to now use this API. And, um, and if we decide that this specific address cannot mine anymore, uh, cannot be used for transacting anymore, um, it, they can make it really, really hard for anybody to, that is um, blocked to actually transact something. And, and I, I mean, who knows? Like even today already, we see cases with the banking system and stuff like that. Um, of course, it's used against actual terrorists and threats but it's also used for just normal people look at canada like what happened there like that's scary and and so i totally see this also used and so yes i think it's vital for the bitcoin network and the survival of it that we um do as much mining in homes as possible because that's not something that a government or any entity could take away unless they literally go into every house and take away your miners. And so, and that's not going to happen. So I think it's something that right now, like, yes, we have all this hype with these really big miners and they're cool and they're stock listed and it brings Bitcoin further and that's great. But I think at one point we need to realize that we're creating now again, a centralized, and a centralized system and that's not what we want. And um, so, yeah, so we need to bring it back. And of course, um, having a miner in everybody's house is definitely something I would like to see. And if we can make it easier with heating your water at the same time, sure, so it is. So that's definitely a, another positive thing um, beside of actually getting paid to shower. Do you see, um, uh, like a lot of the Monero guys say that like ASICs could potentially be regulated and like you would need a permit to even get the specialized hardware to mine um, under these climate laws. And then recently we saw this Greenpeace change the code kind of thing. Um, do you see like ASICs kind of being prohibited from, you know, every home having an ASIC in their water heater? They're trying to make weed illegal and you can buy it at every corner. Like, I, I sure, they will try maybe, but I think humans... They're ingenious, like, then I don't know, like, it's like the size of a shoebox. So maybe you will buy some shoes, <laughs> ASIC shoes. And I, I mean, yes, it could be, but I'm not too worried about that, that people will figure out a way um, to distribute this. I mean, look, like, um, look in Cuba with the, with the, with the distribution of the, of like, of the videos and news articles and stuff with the, with the hard drives that they hand around, like, there is a reason that we've survived as humans that long and that's human ingenuity is part of it. And I think we're going to find ways around this. Um, I, it, will it happen? I don't know. It's hard to say. I think there is going to be a game theory at one point that some countries will allow it and some countries will ban it. And the companies that will ban it 
uh, the countries that will ban it, they will realize that everybody's leaving. So I, I think eventually countries will understand that taking away freedoms from their citizens is a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, look at how the prohibition in America went, right? That was a, yeah, that went, that went fantastic, didn't it? And also, there's <laughs> things like where humans did that whole thing where, um, there, wow, there was, I remember seeing there was this thing where like, they, they, um, like wine companies dehydrate grapes into like a powder or a bar, and then it would have on the instructions like, do not do this step, this step, this step, this step, because yes. it will turn it into alcohol. <laughs> that was yes, the idea. Not a flamethrower. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the idea is you're supposed to turn it into alcohol. Or like, um, and then as you said, like when it comes to the government coming to people's homes, I, I don't know how many people listening will know this, but in the UK, you have to have a TV license. So you have to have a license to watch television. Okay. Uh, and it's obviously like a big joke thing because. <laughs> like how do they prove because you can have a television but you have to have it plugged in it's like how can they prove you're actually watching television not just playing a game or whatever so there's basically no way they can prove it and, and the people try you know who try to come into your house to prove it can't come in and there's all these kinds of things so i can imagine any country actually trying to do this outside of like china and very strict communist-esque countries uh, it's just going to be a complete flop um yeah. especially in the u.s we've got so much land to cover especially compared to the uk where on this tiny little island we can't even do it properly here so do you have one of those sorts? What was that, sorry? I you don't because to be fair, I genuinely don't watch any live television while I'm in my house. I haven't had a TV license ever since I moved out of my parents' house because I actually don't watch live TV. I just watch Netflix and that's legal. So if the government's listening, fuck you. I'm absolutely <laughs> fine and above board. So, <laughs> um, but, And I'm barely ever in the country anyway. So screw you guys. But yeah, I guess a question I've got for you that's completely more on topic. Um, when it comes to the setup and I don't uh, without asking you to go into excruciating detail but it'd yeah. be cool to get some more detail on yes. for the water heater bitcoin miner like how does that work like if you take me from like I don't know say you've got the power source and you plug in here and then the plug runs to yeah. whatever if you can just step me step by step me through it so I can understand that and people yeah. out there can understand and for anyone listening uh sharing screen now i advise you to watch the video if you can but obviously we'll describe it as best as you can yes. um for the people listening or if you also go to my Twitter's account at Schnitzel, there is pictures on there. But yeah, I'm gonna try to explain it. So the first thing, imagine any water heater. So a water heater usually is a cylindrical long piece that, um, like I said, usually it's like 40 gallons, which is 120 liters. There are bigger ones or smaller ones, it doesn't really matter. But basically you have one input and one output. And um, the input puts cold water in from your um, from wherever you get your water. So it's the same water source as the cold water tap on your house. And, um, and it has an output where the hot water goes out that goes then to the hot water tap, the showers and all the things. And usually inside that water heater that is insulated quite well um, has some kind of heat source. Now, there are either electrical ones so they literally just have like a hot water kettle, like these um, water coils um, or heating coils. Or if you have a propane gas one, it has a burner under it. And it's just a really big hot pot that just has a burner at the bottom and it heats up air. So, or it heats the water. So that's the, that's the standard system. Now, one of the special things is that the cold water inlet, so where the cold water goes in, there's actually a pipe inside the water heater that puts out the, water, the cold water at the bottom. Because water, if you heat it up, automatically will separate in the warmer and colder part. And while you're taking a shower, there is cold water rushing into the tank. If you would put the cold water on the top, it would immediately mix with the hot water that is there and your cold shower and your, and your shower will get cold and it wouldn't be fun at all. That's why there's a pipe inside the water heater that puts it in. There's also some that actually have the inlet at the bottom. It doesn't matter. Just imagine water goes in at the bottom, comes hot out at the top. So that's the default system. Now, um, and also the pressure comes from the normal uh, municipal pressure. So there's no pump or anything that pressurizes the hot water. It's just because there's pressure on the cold water side. The hot water side also has pressure. And um, so if the the um, wherever you get your water from, there is constant pressure there, and that's actually what the pressure does inside um, your house. There are pressure increase in pumps and stuff like that, but we're not going to look into this. Um, so yeah, and so basically, what I had to do is to figure out a way: how can I heat the water that is in the tank? Because I very fast I was aware that I couldn't build what is called a tankless water heater. 
there are now existing. And basically what a tankless water heat means, it's a tank and without a tank. So they generate so much heat with either mostly propane or electricity that the water, while it's passing through the tankless water heater, gets heated up enough that it's hot enough on the other side. Um, but that's not very common. Most water heating systems today still have a tank. So they actually run only for a few amount of time. And they always run before you actually use the hot water. That means you're, uh, you take a shower, you use, let's say, 20 liters of water. And so the tank now is cooler than it was before. And the heater now runs until the water is back up to 60 degrees Celsius, 140 Fahrenheit. That's the standard temperature. And then the water heater turns off. So there is a thermostat or multiple of them inside the water heater. On the picture, we see that um, behind these covers, um, there's a thermostat there that constantly measures the temperature of the water. And if it's below 140 degrees, the, the heating coil runs. If it's above 140 degrees, it stops. And so with that, you basically have hot water available all the time. And um, that also means your water heater actually loses a little bit of hot water over time. Uh, mine, for example, it maybe gets turned on every couple of hours just because it needs to bring back the water back up. So for anybody that has like a house that stands empty for a whole week, um, think about your water heater is actually running the whole time. So that's maybe something you could actually turn it off if you want to save some energy. There's some bacterial discussions around this. So research that just, you know, it uses a lot of energy. Um, so that's basically how the water heater itself works. Now, um, like I said, I had to figure out how to actually get the heat in there, because the best would, of course, we would just put the miner into the water. But as we figured out before, that's going to destroy the miner and um, you get electrocuted, not the things we want. So um, what I've done, and that's what most immersion systems are, is the miner is actually inside an oil. It's called, and um, the technical term is a dielectrical fluid, which means it's a fluid that does not conduct electricity. Um, it's some kind of oil. It's specialized for that usage. So there's actually companies out there um, that create these fluids specifically for miners. Because the problem is because you put something into it, you need, need to make sure that it doesn't react with it. There are some people that just use normal mineral oil or um, transmission fluid and things like that. They all are not water-based, so they all don't conduct electricity but they might be interact with the electrical pieces on your miner. And I've seen pictures where like pieces of the PCB just fell off <laughs> or it discolors the whole thing or it actually destroys it because it like attacks one of them of the paints or some of the coatings and stuff like that. So you want to make sure that the oil that you use works together with, <clears throat> with the miner and you can find online, you can buy them and no problem at all. And so basically what you want to do is you want to heat up the oil with your miner and you want to somehow exchange the hot oil with the cool water. And that's what you use an heat exchanger for. So that's on the picture is that right thingy there. It's this, um, I'm using a plate heat exchanger. There's a lot of different types, but that's the most common. But basically what you can imagine it that this plate exchanger has four holes where you can put the liquid in that comes out at the bottom and you can put in the liquid at the bottom and it comes out at the top. And these two liquids, they're gonna go through this heat exchanger and they're gonna go, go through different plates. So there's very thin plates that have a very a tiny gap in between them and the liquid can go through there, but it's built in a way that they have to go past each other, but they never touch each other because you don't wanna mix the oil with the water. But because of electrical um, or with the, because there's a heat difference, the hot oil that touches the cooler water will automatically pass its heat to the water because any heat system always wants to that always wants to have an equilibrium an equilibrium um, between the temperatures so if you pump in hot oil and you also pump through cold water the oil will be cooler the water will be hotter and if you do this enough eventually all the heat from the oil will go into the water. And so that's basically explains the two loops. So I have one loop. I'm going to show you another picture here. So I basically have what I call the bit cool loop, where the bit cool, that's the, the liquid, by the way, the oil is called bit cool. And um, 
it go, it's pumped in at the bottom of the miner, passes through the miner from the bottom to the top, use this that um, because heat rises, so it automatically goes up. It then passes in this small reservoir on the side where it's then sucked in again and put all the way around the tank. Then there's a pump that runs the whole thing. The bit cool goes into the heat exchanger, comes out of the heat exchanger and goes back uh, into the tank below the miner. So that's one of the loops that's separated. That's only the oil that runs all the time. And so this oil gets heated up and gets cooled at the heat exchanger and passes through it again. And then we have the blue loop, which is the water loop. So I need to somehow take the, because in the tank, the whole water has roughly the same temperature and I want to raise the temperature of all the water higher. So I need to take all the water out, heat it up and basically create a second loop. And so I'm using the drain plug. So pretty much every water heater has a drain plug at the bottom to take out, usually like to drain it if you need to do maintenance. So I'm taking out water there, pump it to the top where the heat exchanger sits, pass it through the heat exchanger and put it back into the inlet, the normal cold water inlet of the, of the, heat ex, uh, of the water tank. And then, as we discussed, there's a pipe in it that puts it to the bottom. And so I basically just run this all the time. And this then will also, will slowly heat up the water inside the water tank. And then using the actual thermostats that are usually used to turn on the electrical coils on and off, I'm using them to have a little computer, which is in the back, that basically monitors these thermostats. And when the thermostat turns on, it tells the whole system to turn on. If the thermostat turns off, which means the water is hot enough, it tells the whole system to turn off. And that's, that's the whole system. So I'm basically just replacing the heat coils that are usually inside the water tank. I'm having an, ex an heat exchanger outside and I just run the cool water through it all the time and the bit cool on the other side. And that's how the heat exchange actually works. How long does it take the uh, miner to heat the, the full uh, amount of water, like the 120 liters or whatever? I've never tested that because um, I don't know. Like it, usually the water heater is always hot, um, but I do know, so that's maybe a thing. So my water heater is three to 4,000 watts, which is like the highest one you can get in the US with, um, with normal residential electrical systems. Um, and so, um, but the miner is only like 1,600 watts. So it's like a third of what the actual heater has. So it also takes three times as long to heat up the water again. But I mean, in normal usage with my wife, even if we just shower right after each other, um, when the water heater is hot, so let's say in the morning you take a shower, it's at 140 Celsius, 60 degrees, um, because it was heated up. And then you use, let's say, 40 liters, 50 liters, which is half of the tank. It takes maybe three, four hours again to heat up the whole thing. So yeah, so if you have like, if you would have a lot of water usage, um, yeah, it, it could happen. That, um, that maybe you have some cold water for a short amount of time. But um, that's why I said, like I, I'm, I wanna play with actually replace or adding more miners so that I have the exact same amount of wattage than the water heater. Um, because then I can really do comparisons and figure out efficiency losses and things like that. Um, I guess it doesn't matter if it takes longer because you just get more sats, right? Yeah, it, no, it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, um, it's just a question like, how fast do you need hot water again? So let's say you take a shower, your dishwasher runs and your, clo your clothes washer as well, and you use it all of them. Yeah, you're going to run out of hot water at one point. Now, a normal water heater would work with 4,000 watts against this to heat up the water. The miner mine is now working on with 1,600. But yeah, if, if you don't have massive peaks of hot water usage, well, it, it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, um, I like... Like in Nigeria, in Nigeria, we do have like water heaters and uh, they tend to work like most of it, like you explained, like once the water is you know, at boiling point, it's obviously, you know, shuts down. And, you know, I, I think the goal of, you know, this, you know, system that you build is basically, it might not, you know, it might not be, you, 
it, the end goal might not be for people to actually be profitable. You know, it might just be, you know, to be able to, you know, um, it's like you said, it's free money. You know, people can you know, mine Bitcoins, they'll be able to offset their electricity bills without having to actually, you know, take money from elsewhere to offset, you know, the, you know electricity, electricity bills, even if to an, you know, a large extent. So what I was going to ask, uh, what I was going to say is, you know, once the border gets to boiling point, it shuts down. If now, if I was, you know, using your system at the point where the heater stops, you know, um, you know, shuts down, you know, because yep. it's already hit boiling point, will the miner stop working at that point? Or would you, would this, you know, since it's stopped with digital electricity, it will keep on, you know, working or it will shut down at the same time, at the same time the um, heater shuts down? So right now, um, the miners only run while the tank basically says, I'm not yet at 140 or 60 degrees Celsius. As soon as the water inside reaches that temperature, the miner shuts off completely. The pumps stop, the whole system just idles and waits until the next time hot water is used again. That means my miners right now, they only run for a couple of hours per day. Um, um, if you wanted to run the miners continuously, you would need to find a way how to get the heat away from the miners because they continuously generate 1,600 watts. And that's a lot of energy. And that's so there's a lot water is going to get hot really hard, uh, really fast. And so you would need to figure out a way. Now, that's one thing that I haven't built yet. And I, that's something I want to look into. You could, for example, um, have a radiator outside, like a regular car radiator outside, and just have like an, an, a switching valve that basically realizes when the hot water is hot, then it basically puts the bit cool outside and radiates the heat away outside. Then you could run the miner 24 seven um, because you basically, as soon as the water is hot enough, you can go there. And there are people that I've seen that build that specifically. My goal is actually what you see on the picture on the left side. That's my whole house heating system. So our house is 130 years old and it's heated by an oil furnace that heats up water and the hot water is circulated through radiators in the house and um, where then the heat gets, that's how the house is heated. So my hope is that for the winter, I will have like after the pump, I will have a little tea and then as soon that of like the liquid. And then as soon as the water is hot enough, the hot water, uh, the, sorry, the hot bit cool all goes on the left side and heats up the water that circulates throughout the house. And with that, I can then heat the house with the exact same system. Um, and then maybe eventually we're gonna build a pool and then we wanna heat the pool as well. And so if you add all these systems together, I think you can then actually run the miners 24 seven. And then it makes sense again to do, put in as efficient miners as possible in like an S19 or whatever is gonna be the most efficient one at that time. Then. Michael, this was amazing. Thank you for, uh explaining this to us uh You're very Lawrence had to cut out he he had another call like i explained to you on twitter but um i really appreciate you coming on the show and breaking this all down for us like when i saw your tweets i was super interested and i'm not really like technical like that so for you to come on here and kind of give us a uh layman's terms explanation of how this all worked out was just amazing um i really appreciate you coming on the show Oh, you're welcome. No, I'm I'm super interested. Like I said in the beginning, for me, this is really is to learn a lot, but also to share a lot. Um, I really think big, if Bitcoin teaches us one thing, that open source or sharing is super important, and um, and that's why I'm doing all of this. So my end goal is really to have videos, um, parts lists, explaining systems, how the whole system works. I already open sourced all the code that I wrote, like. Uh, like I mentioned, there's a little computer that actually interacts with the miners. That's all open source. You can find it on my GitHub. Um, so yeah, that's really that's the that's the plan to teach about this as many people as possible because I think there's still a lot of doubters of Bitcoin and telling them about like about the money system and all that stuff. Sure, that's possible. But at least my experience now is that a lot of people suddenly are very interested in Bitcoin because they realize they can now heat their house with it and they can make money with it. And so they don't care about the price really anymore. They just care about 
did I make any money? And so, and I think that's so it's a good, good, good way to orange peel um, as many people. And so that's why I'm sharing it, that everybody can use this and convince all your friends, family and neighbors and whatever else you want to convince um, to use Bitcoin. That Bitcoin is really something that is for the greater good for people. And um, yeah, you can literally get paid while showering. So why, who doesn't want that? Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I, we interviewed Vlad Kostea and also Econo Alchemist, and they're both big proponents of like home mining to decentralize the, the mining network to kind of counter what you were talking about, about corporate mining, perhaps censoring uh, transactions and stuff like that. So I see this as one of the most viable ways to get no coiners into mining and to be accumulating Bitcoin in kind of like a risk-free way where they don't have to go out of their comfort zone to, to get some sats. Right. And then once they have some, then they can start using them. Yeah, like shout out to earn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife and I were joking, like right now the S9 is not profitable. So it doesn't really make sense to use more energy than we would use anyway. But there is maybe a time where the S9 is profitable again. And they were like, wait, so then are we showering 24 hours a day? Because the more you shower, the more we, like the more money. The calculation is a slight bit wrong because we, that doesn't calculate into water. That also costs money, of course. But maybe actually if the if the if if the Bitcoin price is so high that you can also pay the water with it. Yeah, you could you could open up a shower system for all your friends and neighbors and come shower for free in your house because you're gonna just make more money. So I or think there's a lot of things. Your jacuzzi with it, like during yeah. the winter. Yeah. No, totally. Yeah. yeah. Well, Michael, thanks again. Um, I think we're gonna wrap it up because I don't want to take too much of your time. We're a little bit over the hour that I originally no asked you. To. But um, anytime you want to come back, if you have new developments, man, just hit me up and uh, I'd be happy to interview you again. Sure. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely planning to do more. And like I said, the cold season is going to come at one point and I want to heat the house. And so there's definitely some updates that we can talk about. Sweet. Perfect. Uh, Jerry, did you have one last question or anything before Michael goes? Yes. Uh, how many, how many uh, miners does it take? Uh, does the number of miners determine the size of the, the bead pool? Like, for instance, you want to heat, uh, what, I'm assuming that what it takes to heat like a regular home water heater is not exactly the same number of miners it would take to heat like your house or a It will just, it's possible because the miner itself, they all get, they all are able to heat the bit cool to 150 Fahrenheit. And that's one single one or a thousand of them. So they can't get it hotter. So the, 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 the temperature that you reach is the same. The question is more like how fast. Um, so my house, for example, that um, it would just probably take much longer to heat the house initially. Um, so, but that's actually what I'm all trying to figure out. Like that's one of the reasons that you see all these sensors and temperature measurements and that stuff. Like that's not necessary for the system in any way to work. It's more about gathering data so that we can create comparisons. So we can say like, what is the perfect size if I'm ever deciding to build this or if anybody else is interested in the data to maybe create a company like that, reach out. Um, because yeah, I really want to gather as much as data as I can to, to specifically answer these questions. Um, but no, it doesn't matter how many you have. Um, it's just the more you have, the faster it is, whatever you're trying to do. Speaking of reaching out, why don't you give people your uh, social media so that they can reach out to you? Yeah, they find me on Twitter, um, Schnitzel, the German veal dish. Um, that's me. And um, yeah, you find me there. You find a lot of the data there. I probably tweet once a day about this with like new data. And um, and yeah, and if anybody's interested in supporting it, there's also donations link there. Like I said, it's a completely open source system or project. I'm publishing all the data, everything that I built from it. So if anybody wants to make it a bit faster available. I'm planning on videos. I'm planning on, on build guides. Um, yeah, shoot me some sets or shoot the project some sets because it's definitely going to make it faster um, for all it to happen. Well, Michael, thanks again. Um, to our listeners, thank you for listening. You're not going to get an eloquent outro because Lawrence has left and I'm not as well spoken as he is, but uh, thanks again. And I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. Mm -hmm.